my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Luke 1, 46, 47. We have witnessed God's restoration in the midst of brokenness. We have prepared ourselves for Christ's coming. We have proclaimed with faith the promise of God's generous righteousness. Now we stand with his love and heart, for God waiting to receive our spiritual home for the coming of hope. Fill us with restoration, love, prepare us for the coming of your holy child. Encourage us to proclaim the good news to all people. Like Mary, we are your noble servant. As we light this fourth candle of Adam, may we be reminded of God that you so love the this world that you gave your only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. May we also look upon Christmas as meaning love. Just as you sent your gift of pure love on that first Christmas, that love that is sent from heaven to be born of a virgin, that love that's laid in the stretchy manger <coughs> of a born in Bethlehem, help us, O Lord, he reflects on the magnitude of love that was made man manifest in your son, Jesus the Son. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Have a hard time lighting the candles. <laughs> <laughs> the Davis and Robinson family for uh, coming forth and doing our fourth Advent candle. We thank you for your participation. We thank all of the Advent participants for this month who have participated in the lighting of the Advent candles. We certainly appreciate it and try to stretch it to different families every year to, so we can all share in the experience uh, of what it means.
claim collectively with no power of our own, leaning and depending on you, trusting in your holy word. We thank you, O God, for last night's lying down. of love and you allow us to awake out of our strength. God, to realize it doesn't because of our goodness, but because you are good. Because of your grace and because of your mercy, you allow us to assemble ourselves here one more time on this side of the grave. God has become, become thinking on how good and how pleasant it is when brothers and you can come together and think on the goodness of the Lord. When we can come together and glorify and worship your holy name. Boy, if we realize this morning that it is right, and it's always a good thing to give you thanks and to give you praise for your many, many blessings. So God has become, as we are entering, as we have already entered into this season of thanksgiving, into this season of worship, this season in which has been set aside to celebrate the birth of your son Jesus. We thank you, God, for that gift. We thank you for the gift that you gave us through your one and only son. That he came down through 42 generations, that he suffered under Pontius power, that he was crucified, died, and buried. But according to the word of God on the third day, oh hallelujah, he got up, hallelujah, and because he lived, we live also. So we thank you this morning, God, for Jesus, oh God, the one that was born, oh God, that came through the birth canal of a woman by the name of Mary, born in Bethlehem. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he lived and that he was handled among men. But we thank you, O oh God, that right now he's seated at the right hand of God, interceding on our own behalf. So God has become to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We ask, O oh God, that everything we do and everything we say this morning might be pleasing. That it might be what you would have us to do in this time of celebration. That you might be glorified. That you might be edified. That all the world would know that there is one God and only one God. And that your son Jesus, through him, we all can be saved. So Father, we thank you. So God, we pray and we invite the Holy Spirit this morning. That it will come in and sup with us as we tarry here for just a little while. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Come on in and have your way with us. Even in a, a time such as this, have your way. That when we shall leave this place, we'll really rejoice in the fact that it was a good thing. That we were in the house of the Lord one more time. So God, we pray right now that you would order each and every one of our steps in your way and in your word. For we still believe 
that all things, that everything is working together for the good of them that love the Lord and for those that are the call according to his purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
unfamiliar faces here. I know my son's visiting from Cali. Kendrick will be standing Amen. 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 Amen.
Um, prayer line is open on Wednesday mornings, uh, 7 a.m. and also at 12 noon by calling in on the prayer line. Um, pastor's office hours are 12 noon to 2 p.m. on Wednesdays. On tomorrow, December the 25th, rejoice. Jesus is born for us. Glory to God in the highest. December the 28th, PPR will meet at 5.30 p.m. And on December the 30th, the grocery store I just held up, there is a blood drive at St. Stephen's, or Delaware Street, 101 uh, State Street, Camelot Hall, Delmar, Delaware, from 10 to 3. You may see Sister Brittany here. Where's Sister Brittany? Up in the back. Okay, Sister Brittany, you may see her. Um, if you're interested in doing the blood drive, or if you have any questions, please see Sister Brittany. December 31st, uh, Pastor will be preaching at our 9 a.m. service, along with our watch night service will be included on our morning in our morning service on next Sunday morning on the 31st. And January 1, let have a blessed and prosperous New Year to everyone. Please remember those on our prayer list. Uh, it was quite a bit happening um, last week. Um, please, please, please remember to keep Sister Marie in his prayers. Um, any news?
Patricia Bell, the 27th, obviously Terrigan Jr., and Marcus Hardy, and Gia Hardy. Amen. On the 27th. <laughs> on the 29th, Marche Yule. And on the 31st, Amir Bell. to do our dramatization of the miracle of Christmas, worship his majesty. And let me just give you a little background. Um, this is a, a, a play called The Miracle of Christmas, and it's, the setting is 
the church choir's final rehearsal before its Christmas Eve service. So, I'm going to do a quick introduction of all of our characters. We have Josh, who is a choir member, who will be played by Robert Horsey. Kevin, a choir uh, member, who will be played, played by Bernie Lamont. Choir director and worship leader, myself, yours truly. I don't want y'all to think I'm a little busy bee today, but they just kept me doing other things. So. <laughs> Keep it moving here. Um, Claire, our choir member, my sister Sharon. Emma, choir member, sister D. Andy, a choir member, sister Phyllis, party. Betty, a church member, and older lady, sister Kathy Richardson. And we have extras in the choir. We also have Danielle, who is being played by sister Ebony. Benjamin, being played by Brother Lee, and Sarah, Sister Brendy. We have Shepherds, Brother Jacoby, replacing Brother Bill, Brother Brian, Taylor, and Brother Jack Strand. That is a treat, I'm telling you. And then we have our little angels. We have Little Amir, we have Ramella, we have True, and we have Zacchaeus. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And Johan. And Johan. And Johan. And Johan. All right. All the angels are all set. I believe music director. We are ready to get it.
my daughter several years, months ago. Even aliens need to study for exams. Girl, I hear you. That turn of mind, he would do anything to keep from studying from his schoolwork. He even offered to clean his room last night. He has a pair of pet girl that can stand up all by themselves. Yeah. Tell me about this. Last week, when Ash returned to dust, you know what she said? I dust once, Mom. It all comes back. I'm not falling for that. <laughs> hey, y'all, what's going on? Hey, hey. hey. I've got some goodies in the choir room if y'all want something back like there. Okay. No, I'm trying to be good. <laughs> I thought the dryer was making my clothes small, oh, but thank when it turned out that it was that old refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, Christmas is not the time of year to be on nobody's diet, girl. Come on, man. Christmas is not the time of year for a lot of things. Emma, might to, Emma, I might myself come back and stay, can't get it done. Why did it all be so hard at Christmas? Because there are so many extra things that you have to do. Look, it's just a shame, because all of the business, it just keeps distracting me from the real meaning of Christmas. And I know. What? How are we going to pull this off? Well, maybe it isn't that we have so much to do. You just ain't following right now. I don't know you were Well, I've been studying the book of Luke, ladies. And just today, I read about Mary and Martha in chapter 10. Jesus and his disciples stopped by their home on the way to Jerusalem. And while they were there, Martha was running all around trying to get dinner ready, girls. That, but Mary, Mary sat at Jesus' feet, listening to him teach. <laughs> but look, when Martha complained, so yeah, that Mary wasn't helping her. Jesus said, "Martha, you are worried and upset over all of this stuff, these details. Only one thing is needed." Mary knows what that is, and it'll never be taken from her. That's one of my favorite passages. Yes, it reminds me that every day, and even especially, especially at Christmas, there will be distractions. Mm -hmm. Martha got distracted from doing what was truly important. I mean, you know, the Son of God was right there in her living room. Oh, Honey, them dishes for the waiting. Oh, right. one thing is needed. I wish I could do that. Mm -hmm. Just leave things undone and pray and study God's word like I should. Mm -hmm. Now, Claire, Jesus wasn't saying her work was bad or unnecessary. He was pointing out that Martha let her work become more important well, than being with Jesus. My Lord, my Lord. It's really sad, isn't it, mm -hmm. that we let that happen, especially at Christmas time. Why can't we get done what we really need to do and still be close to Jesus? And how are we supposed to pull that off? Well, I think I know. <laughs> do what you need to do every day, but don't give up your quiet right. time, no matter how crazy things get. And crazy it will be. But maybe it's about being willing to lay aside my plans when I know God is directing me to do something else. Yeah, like Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was engaged her life on the right track. She was all set until the angels appeared and gave her news of changing everything. So what did she do? Well, I can't tell you what she, I can tell you what she didn't do. She didn't say, "Give me a few more days to think it over," mm. or "Sorry, I'm a little busy right now." She said, <laughs> "Let it be unto me." What she said? What she said? Let it be unto uh, me. Uh, 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 just as you said. I wish I could face life's challenges with that kind of peace. You can, Claire. Uh, Think about what was going on in Mary's world. God had been silent for over 400 years. This news brought back something that they all had forgotten. How to feel. Hope.
Robin. Josh is late tonight, y'all. <laughs> 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 so how we got to come down. I should get a penalty. I think five on She joined the band and they sold laundry out. So I'll have clean clothes for the next 60 years. Girl, I tell you, I had to put my foot down with all that. I told my kids no more fundraisers unless they're selling back. I was a little surprised this year, though, that that Josh didn't buy anything. And they always have been big supporters of the kids' fundraisers. You know, Josh lost his job. Joe? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. You know, it's one of them downsizing things. Oh, okay. <laughs> he lives around the corner from you, don't he? <laughs> yes, I think so. Yeah, I think I see, I heard he's applying for jobs everywhere, but hasn't gotten any offers yet. Last weekend, they said they told the kids that they would not get anything for Christmas, just the things that were needed. Oh, oh. And they even put their house up for sale wow. in January. Oh, you know, it must be hard to sing about the mirror for Christmas. When your life has been turned upside down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't get it. The whole family seems happy. They act like everything is fine. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. How are you ladies doing? Yes. Hi, Hi, Brother Josh. Josh. Brother Josh. We're doing great compared to you. Oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, I Merry Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, like Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was engaged. I told that Josh about you. Josh said it was at the prayer request. A prayer request it was. It was a prayer request, Josh. But is there anything that we can do to help you guys? Uh, no, not really. I haven't tried to hide that situation. Nor have we made a point of announcement. <laughs> oh, <laughs> some of the people think us differently. Well, but we really appreciate your work. <laughs> well, can we help with the kids any kind of way? Something? Now, thanks for the offer. We've been truthful with them. They're going to get together and hold us closer as a family. Yeah. Their faith is growing and my faith is growing too. Amen. I think this is going to be one of the best Christmases that we ever had together. Amen. I like that. Thank you, Josh. I know what that Bible says, trust the Lord with all your heart, and don't lean on to your own understanding. But how do you keep from worrying? I'll be lying if I say I didn't worry about this. But if my faith is real, I need to exercise it, right? Come on, man, bro. Before all this happened, my faith was like my favorite sweater. No. I put it up in my closet and didn't think about it until it was time to be cold. Mm -hmm. But now I'm beginning how to learn to exercise my faith every day. All right, Got this We've used up all our savings. We cut back on everything we can. I don't know what we'll do once we sell our house. But every time I start to work, I stop and I pray and I pray and I pray. And I, pray. And I, pray. I tell God we trust Him to see us through because I know, I know. I know they will. Yeah. God has the plan. Yeah. Yes, it is. working it out right now. Right there. Right, right, right now, I'm closer to God than I've ever been. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Ooh, that was something that Yeah.
instead of singing with the children of the choir later on? Yeah, if she's so excited about Christmas, she can't stay still for two minutes except for singing with the choir. Oh, man. In spite of everything that's happened? Yeah, I think she's excited because of this. My kids have so much faith that there's no God is going to do something big. And you, do you believe? Yes. God is going to take care of us and going to answer our prayers. Now, there's a lot I don't understand about his timing or the way he does things. Oh. But, no matter what, my God is good. Yeah. And that, that's a miracle. That's a miracle in itself. If you consider the nature of man. You want to know something? This person is less stressful, less hectic, and definitely more spirit filled than you. I can't explain it. It's kind of like, I don't know. It seems to free me up to be more joyful. Can you understand what I'm saying, Kevin? Absolutely, man. Remember, remember the story that Jesus told about the farmer and the seed? Sure. The farmer went to sow seeds. Some fell on, on roots, some fell on rocky, rocky grounds, some fell in the thorns, some fell on good soil. But, what, 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 what has this got to do with Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> you, probably more than anyone else here, have a reason to sing the songs of Christmas with all your heart. <laughs> Jesus explained the seeds that fell in the thorns represent those who believe, like you and me. But the joy of life with Christ is crowded. And sometimes by the thorns of life, problems and money and stuff, the world traps into giving those things too much, right? Importance, especially at Christmas. You have some of the, some that has stripped away and is bringing your freedom you haven't felt in a long time, bro. You probably, more than anyone else, have a reason to sing the songs of Christmas with all your heart. Yes. <laughs>
day before Christmas, I and I had this was like the opening of home alone. And this service is helps to bring a little calm to my world. To me, it's all part of celebrating the season. Hi, girls. Hey. hey! Merry Christmas! Mm. Joy to the neighborhood. Oh, and cookies! Oh yes, thank you. Thank you, sis. Cookies. Cookies. cookies to me. Um, <laughs> 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 but joy to the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! You look beautiful, there. All dressed, all dressed up for Christmas. I know what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how far I back up from that year, when I finally come to terms with this getting old business, well, I told myself when I went out the door this morning, I'm not a hot mess. I'm a spicy disaster. Well, Betty. Are your kids and grandkids coming over for Christmas? I don't know. They're at a point in their lives where other people are making decisions for them. I want them to come over because they want to. I should win an award to keep my mouth messed up. Well, I mean, look, if you're going to be by yourself, just come on over to Santa Press because everybody has to go. Nobody, nobody should be alone at Christmas. You just want me to come over there because you need a dishwasher. <laughs> Yeah, my mind is broke. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, it took me a while to get over myself after my past It's true. The holidays are harder when there's an empty place at the table. But the Lord finally got my attention one day. Oh, well, yes. you know what he said? Mm. He said, Betty, it's okay to grieve. Yeah. Put your past all that. You're just feeling sorry for yourself. Well, look around. You still got stuff to do mm. and people to help. Yes. For my yes. sake. Yes. Remember the last thing I said to you before I went back to heaven? I will be with you always. Yes. Even to the end of the world. Yes. I wasn't just talking to you. I was talking to I was talking to everyone standing around that day. Mm. You too. I love you more than you'll ever know, and you will never be alone. Amen. Amen. That's beautiful, Betty. Oh, yeah, that's Jesus. Oh, my God. Ever since then, I have never felt alone. I wake up every morning mm -hmm. ready to punch the day in the face. All right. All right. All right. All right. No, no, you got Christmas for you coming or not. Oh. Okay. So. Well, no, that's what it would take on you. But there's this old man. Oh. Oh. Maybe I should say he's an older man. Oh. An older man who lives two doors down from me. Oh. Honey, you know what? Mm. He is two scoops of grumpy <laughs> and a bowl full of honoring. <laughs> I'm going to stop by his house on Christmas Day mm. with some hot food, oh, look, like some that. presents, mm. and a big old dose of Jesus. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do my best to bring that man some joy. Yeah. Just like Jesus. Joy to the neighborhood. Joy to the world, honey. Yes, yeah.
to the world. Well, thank you for coming to our Christmas celebration. Before we go any further, though, let's get our hearts in tune with the reason why we're here. Like the phrase goes, Jesus is the reason for the season. The saying may be a little overused, but guess what? It's true. In the classic movie, It's a Wonderful Life, George Bailey finds out what the world would be like if he had never been born. In the same way, what would the world be like if Jesus had never been born? The obvious answer is that there would be no Christmas, but it goes a lot deeper than that. If Jesus had never been born, there would be no hope. There would be no way to be saved from our sins. There would be no promises, no New Testament, no Holy Spirit. There would be no life after the grave. But the miracle of Christmas is this. Jesus was born. We do have hope. Christ's life death and resurrection resurrection makes salvation available to everyone no matter their sin so we have this precious gift which prophets foretold but could never experience because Christ had not yet been born even the angels our little angels they marvel at the great mystery of salvation we have promises, we have the Holy Spirit, and we have God's Word revealed in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Most of all, we can have eternal life because Jesus was born. Amen. Jesus is born, and he is Emmanuel, God with us. So remember that every day, and especially at Christmas. There will be distractions, but the Son of God, the Son of God is right there in your living room. Let the distance wait. Okay. Jesus was born. Because of that, I know he has a plan for you. I know he's working. I know he's answering that prayer. There's a lot I don't understand, but that's okay, because my God is good. Yes, yes. yes. Jesus was born, and the last thing he said on earth was, I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. He wasn't just talking to the people standing around that day. He was talking to you. Jesus loves you. God loves you more than you'll ever know, and you'll never, ever be alone. Amen.
the greatest story ever because it's all true. This is a story for me and also for you. You see, God loves you and me so much that once there was a girl named Mary. She was engaged to a man named Joseph. One day, an angel appeared to Mary and told her she was going to have a baby, but this was the embrace of her baby. This baby was God's only son, and his name would be Jesus. When Joseph found out Mary was going to have a baby, he didn't know what to do. Should he marry her? Should he send her away? God sent this angel to Joseph to help him understand. Joseph did everything God told him to do. He taught him to take care of Mary and be a good earthly father to Jesus. A few months later, when it was almost time for Jesus to be born, Mary and Joseph had to come to the Lord's heart of Bethlehem because the king was coming and he was in his own kingdom. It was a hard day when he told him that day. Mary knew he was almost time for Jesus to be born. where Jesus was born. Mary wrapped her baby in Joseph cloth and laid him in the manger, the place where the animals would play. God put a bright star over the place where Jesus was born and lit up with the night shining love and hope and joy to the world. About that time, there was quite a bit of pride of chaos. Some shepherds were settling down for the night, and just when the snow was over, began to snow, a great golden angel appeared. The shepherds were shocked. The sheep were scared, silly. Everyone was so afraid. The angel said, don't be afraid. We're here with good news. God's son has been born, a savior for you. They ran through the night all the way to Bethlehem to find the new baby, God's son, lying in a manger. The shepherds were the first to welcome baby Jesus and honor him. A few years later, a group of wise men came from far away to see Jesus. They had heard about a Savior coming, and God put a bright star in the sky to help them find their way to Jesus' house. They gave Jesus rare and precious gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, treasures for a king. But the wise men received the gift, the, the greatest gift of all, a Savior. Because of Jesus, Mary and Joseph would change forever. The shepherds would change forever, and the wise men would change forever. Everyone who receives the Savior's gift is changed forever, too. I receive his, have you.
done. I know yeah. I'm getting through the invitation, but I do want to thank uh, God for everything that has transpired for His glory in the form of a message, in the form of a play this morning that uh, everyone has done so beautifully. Uh, I know it's just little man was sharing with me that uh, she couldn't sleep still thinking about the play. It was all in her spirit. All of them wondering how it was going to go well. You can rest now. Amen. So we praise God for everyone that participated and all of you who were here. The word of God says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Truly, Jesus is offering that same invitation this morning that anyone who needs rest, anyone who needs salvation, anyone that is in the need of it, Peace, you know, the, the peace that passes all understanding, that peace that only God can give us. Perhaps that is someone this morning, we don't want to take it for granted, that don't know the Lord, and would like to come this morning and give their heart to God. Paul said all you have to do is confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. And he said, you shall be saved. So, it's no big thing. All you got to do is say, Lord, I surrender all. Here I am, take me just as I am. Don't try to dress it up because you can't fix it. I've heard a lot of folks say, well, when I get, when I get right, I'll come. Never you see, we all here this morning. We're not right. That's why we're here this morning. Hallelujah. We've been trying to get it right. And we'll be right. That's the pastor's call. If you will stand, stand. Let there are a thousand and one hundred and seven of our boys that we like to call up this morning. God, we lift them up before you, God. All those, oh God, that are that had a pain this morning in their body. God, we live, we know that you are pain healing. That you can do anything, and all things are possible to them that will be healed. So we lift them up before you this morning. Touch, heal, and deliver right now, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you, and we give you glory for it right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Tell the Lord thank Yeah, 
Praise the Lord. Thank you. And this is 
While we're waiting all day, I'll keep you on. church gave to those and we did not do anything for her. No, for Denise <laughs> is the one with the glue no. that keeps yes warm. Yes. Mm -hmm. keeps things going. If it had not been for her this year for our disaffiliation process, we would sure still, would have been still be in the conference. <laughs> <laughs> because it was a mighty job that had to be done. And she took the ball and she ran with it. Mm -hmm. So we give thanks and praise to you, Denise. But we're to have the talent and the gifts that are being shared among each and every one for the glory of God. So Denise, we thank you, we love you, and we will get to you before yes man. Because the word says we give our flowers to the flowers. Why are you just smell? So if it ain't nothing but them pennies, I have to be. We're gonna make sure that we give you something for the day. Amen. Just, I have a quick announcement also. After the Reverend wants to say a couple of things, but I need to meet with the youth and young adults after Pastor. Yeah, I won't be long. Okay. <laughs> All the youth and young adults. Praise the Lord, Church. Praise the Lord. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm right in line with the other um, distributors and givers this morning. And um, 
I uh, want to give honor to uh, Mother Lillian Kenny, who is the, one of the mothers of the church. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 